Hey everybody, Nick here with 4PlayerNetwork.com, and I'm sitting here with Timon Smektala, the producer over at Techland. Uh, we got our hands on Dying Light yesterday, and we wanted to ask you a few questions about it. The uh, game looks great, by the way. Thank you. Uh, but I wanted to start by asking about the day-night cycle in the game. Uh, what can you tell us about it and how it affects the gameplay? Okay, so day-night cycle is, is something that we are really proud of because it is something that kind of gives you two games in one. Because during the day, you are the hunter. You have the advantage over zombies. Uh, you can run circles around them. You can, you, you're more, more powerful than them. So you can use that to scavenge for supplies, to gather supplies to your safe house. And th during, the night, th during the day, you kind of safe. You're not 100% safe, but you are, you are safe. But during the night, when the night falls, everything changes because the zombies get more aggressive. They get more intelligent. They ch uh, chase you actively. They start climbing. <laughs> yeah, and they start climbing just as good as you. So you really have to use everything that you've gathered, everything that's at your disposal to survive and to succeed. Okay. Um, and I know you all mentioned we were talking to you. You said something about the player that you're playing as in the game is actually infected with I guess the virus or whatever is yep. causing the zombies. Um, what can you tell us about how that plays into the gameplay? Well, we, we we are not revealing much about story, and that plays that that that, that is used mostly in our story. Um, but one of the things that you can do because you are infected, you can kind of sense the zombies around you. So during the night, you have this night sense that when you press a button, you 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 see what surrounds you. You see that there are zombies around you. You see where they are, and you see that if there is this special, um, the most aggressive, that like the ultimate zombie form or ultimate night zombie form called volatile then you can see him perfectly and you know what to avoid because that's a guy that you really wouldn't like to meet in a dark alley okay uh, that actually leads into another question i was going to ask about the uh, the variety of the zombies like how many zombies can we expect to find in this game and uh, we're not giving out an exact number it's kind of too early to do so but uh, you can rest assured that there's like a dozen enemy types and each of those enemy types has many variants so we're talking about a few dozen types of zombies and these zombies evolve during the night so nearly every zombie has the night form and uh, and uh, the day form and the night form. Okay, and so there it are doubles there. Yes, exactly. And there are also zombies that appear only during the night. And volatile is just one of these zombies. Okay. Um, so there are other groups of survivors in the game, correct? Yes. Um, does that play into the gameplay in any way, or can you recruit any of these other survivors into your, well, your camp? Okay, you're not able to recruit them, but there are other factions. None of these factions are, are friendly. You interact with these factions uh, because of the story and because of your decisions. So, yeah, that, 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 that's something that's in the background, really, but it plays a role mostly in the story. Okay. Um, and there is a cra the crafting system, similar yeah. to Dead Island, I suppose, is Well, back. I wouldn't say it's really that's similar. Okay. It, it, it is similar because it is crafting, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, it works differently. Uh, it doesn't require you to use workbenches, so you, if you have a, that special skill, you can do it anywhere. Uh, and I think it's way more realistic. So uh, we kind of uh, with the whole game, we try that uh, kind of try to go with that realistic vibe. So everything that's in our game is like a realistic answer to a question: What would you do in a scenario like this? Okay, that's cool. I didn't realize you're not tied to a workbench, so that gives you a lot more freedom to... Yes, exactly. Okay, that's awesome. Um, and the traps. So I got to play around a little bit with the traps, and they work really cool, but... Uh, can you kind of explain how the system works and how you can use that to your advantage in the gameplay? Okay, so because the game starts like three months after the outbreak, the, the, like the survivors are kind of established there. They, they, they found those those ways to uh, fight with zombies, to, to help them escape zombies. So one of those ways is the traps, the, the trap system. Uh, they put these traps around the city in, in, in lots of locations uh, that they can use when they are being chased, uh, chased especially during the night. Um, uh, so when you start the game um, you kind of help to set up those traps and then you can use them so for example there's this car alarm trap uh, it's a very cool trap I think it's one my favorite that when you set it and when you activate it the car alarm starts so it, the noise draws the zombies to a car mm -hmm. and then the car explodes so it's like a sea of limbs lying li laying oh. around the car so nice. that's great that's cool and we have like a like like I'd say a few dozen types of these traps in our game okay that was actually my next question about how many traps you can expect um, so yeah, the, that was really fun. I got to play with the, uh, there's like an electrolyte fence on the ground, which, yeah, kind of, which is cool Thank you. Um, so there's also these supply drops, I guess. So yes. They drop supply drops in the city. How does that work? Are they dynamic? Or yeah, they're dynamic. The, the, uh, uh, Story-wise, the city is closed in quarantine. So the, the, the world outside, the military outside, kind of support the survivors that are trapped there. And they support the survivors by dropping airdrops uh, throughout the city, and uh, airdrops that contain medicine, food, etc. And this is dynamic. So 
the game generates those airdrops for you. Uh, the the game decided decides where that airdrop should fall, uh, and then you have a chance to go and grab it. But if you if you quick about it, you can be first that reaches it, so you get everything. But if you if you if you uh, for example f meet some zombies and you have to fight them, then when you reach it after a couple of, uh, a couple of minutes, then there might be survivors there, other survivors, and they might be willing to share the, uh, share these supplies with you or not. So you have to fight so them. That was, that was a question I didn't want to ask. So so some survivors might be actually willing to share that with you, but you yes. might have to actually fight them for yeah. it. Yeah, exactly. Okay. That's and that's kind of what that you were dynamic, explaining yeah. in the first trailer, you know, the yeah. CG trailer. Yes. Okay, that's pretty cool. Um, and so checkpoint, how's the checkpointing in the game work? Well, there are checkpoints in our game, but like the traditional checkpoints are happen at exact points during the mission so that that that's how it works but when you die you 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 just respawn after a couple of seconds in a location that's well a quite distance from the where you died dying light obviously has a major single player component but what can you tell us about the multiplayer and and how players be able to you play should together? the game supports four player co-op online co-op so the whole game from a to z can be played in four player co-op um, uh, it's drop in drop out so you can start the game solo then your friend drops in he helps you for a couple of hours then he drops out and then you continue the game solo but what's important is that doing when you play in co-op you don't have to stick together you can go separ separate directions you can do different missions so i think it's really one of the most unique things about our co-op play and also a couple of days ago we've announced a new mode which is called bd zombie so this mode allows you to play as a zombie and invite other people's games so you get for a, for a zombie character you get this extra special character progression system, extra zombie skills. So while playing this mode, you upgrade that zombie character. You 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 can become that ultimate zombie. So it really is kick ass, and you should try it. So you said you progressively you upgrade that character, yep. that that one zombie throughout the game, so yep. and then you can invade other people's yes. game. Okay, that's sure. that's actually pretty exciting. That's yeah, cool. it is. Uh, looking forward to trying that. Now, um, one other question I had that I, I forgot to mention before, as far as because you said you can go out and do other yep. missions when you're playing co-op, so that implies the world's pretty large. Uh, what can you tell us about the size of the world in general? We don't, we, we don't, we don't like to give an exact number because it would be easy to say that it, in terms of map size, is like three times bigger or, or four, four times bigger than the island. But when you add that vertic ver verticality factor to it, mm -hmm. you have to multiply that number. So it really is hard to say how 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 much bigger it is. Yeah, that's true. And and the uh, the verticality really comes into play, especially because yes. the. Uh, the free running mechanic yes, that, exactly. that you all implement the game works really well. I just wanted to Thank say. you. Um, a lot of games try that, and you know maybe some of them do it better than others. But I found it to be really. Uh, really well, smooth. I think what we, what we have here hasn't been done before because uh, it, it it really is a system that supports freedom. Uh, you, you're not constricted to any corridors, to any. We don't highlight any like the things that you can grab. You can grab everything if it is within your reach. If mm -hmm. if, if it looks like you could grab it in real life and climb on top of it, then you can do it in our game. Which that that was really great in those moments of like sheer panic especially yes, night, exactly. when, when I'm running and I was I was actually to the point where I was like I didn't know where I was going to go so I had to start thinking on my feet and I, yes. I, did, I started just trying to grab for things that I didn't know you know would be possible in the game and I'm they really worked uh, every time so great really great awesome. dimension that because that was exactly the goal that we were we were aiming for okay so Techland is responsible for developing uh, Dead Island, which is another game just you know similar in concept as far as being an open world zombie game. And I was just curious: is there any connection there or any communication between the development teams? Okay. Like, did ideas you know born in Dead Island maybe evolve and become mm -hmm. something? Okay, so uh, I think people don't know that Techland is quite a huge organization. We have mm -hmm. a few teams working on different franchises, uh, but Dying Light is a work of the core team from Dead Island. Mm -hmm. So the core team of Dead Island after. We finished supporting Dead Island, which was early, early 2012. We started working on this game. Okay. Uh, and of course, the team grew since the release of Dead Island, like twofold or threefold. So now it's 150 people oh, wow. working on that game. Wow. Um, okay. And projected release date and platforms? I know you have you have a whole bunch of platforms coming yeah, out. Yeah, sure. Uh, Dying Light comes out next year, so it's 2014. It's PC, PS3, PS4, Xbox 360, and Xbox One. Awesome. Uh, we're looking forward to playing it. We're going to be covering on the site quite a bit when it comes out. So uh, thank you for your time. Appreciate Thanks. the uh, taking the time to answer the questions. To talk to you. Thank you. All right. Uh, stay tuned for more from 4Player Network at PAX, I almost said PAX East, PAX Prime 2013.